Hi Nigel here with The Drive Wire and this is the 2022 Lexus LC500. In my mind, one of the best looking cars on the road today. It's also one of my favorite of all time. And today I'm gonna to review this car with all the different stuff that's been added for 2022. We're gonna find out why it's the best grand touring GT car of all time. The Lexus LC500 is a rolling piece of art. In my mind, it's stunningly beautiful. Nobody else makes a car in this price bracket, or even for double the price, that looks this good. I particularly like the way the car sort of comes in here neatly at the waist. It's got these real vents in the side, and then sort of comes out slightly wider in the hips, almost like a Coke bottle shape. I absolutely love it. Now at the front, Lexus's spindle grille has always been pretty much a point of contention. I think this is the only Lexus that carries this really, really well. You've got these sleek LED lights, obviously huge air intakes, two side vents for more cooling to the engine. It looks so good. From the rear, it just gets better. It's got these beautifully designed rear lights here two housings for quad tailpipes, more on the exhaust later on. And then new for 2022 is a thing that Lexus is calling bespoke build, where you can spend a lot of your money on a lot of different stuff. So this car features bespoke build. They're not building too many of them, so this is quite rare. Already the LC500 is a very rare sight. This is even rarer. So as part of that package, you get this carbon fiber rear wing. And I think they've done it really tastefully in that it doesn't look kind of stupid. Uh, it, nothing worse than having a, a really large, dumb looking wing on the back. So I think it looks really cool and it goes with the rest of the styling on the body. Now this is $2,650. So prepare to spend a little bit more money than the base price. The car also has a carbon fiber roof for an additional $2,400. It does help keep the weight down because this Lexus weighs in at around 4,500 pounds. So you may have already noticed that the interior, but shield your eyes or put your sunglasses on because I'm gonna open the door right now and show you another part of this bespoke built LC500. Let me just step back a little so you can take that all in. So what this is, it's a Manhattan Henge Alcantara interior, and it's named after when the sun sets perfectly and it aligns with the west-facing streets of New York City's Manhattan Borough. I think it looks unbelievable, if a little bright, and I think it goes perfectly with the nori green pearl exterior, which is essentially the color of seaweed. I also like the way these door handles are flush and then they just pop out. So again, with the bespoke build, uh, this one has the 20 inch wheels, but you can spend even more of your hard earned cash and get 21 inches. They may well help the uh, fill out the wheel arches somewhat. Uh, on this particular car, you get these Bridgestone Taranzas. Uh, I hate to say it, they're not the best, but the suspension system on this car is so damn good that uh, I don't think it matters that much. I personally would prefer to see some Michelins, Pilot Sports, Pilot Sport 4S's, Super Sports, whatever's available, make it Michelin. And it also gets these massive rotors. You can see how big those things are. And then these huge calipers to stop this 4,500 pound Grand Tourer uh, get down to some slower speeds. But yeah, they work really, really well. So how much do you have to pay for all this luxury? Well, not as bad as you might think. $93,050 is the base price. This particular car has, as I said, the bespoke build package. So there's $15,620 worth of options. You pay $1,075 for delivery, which puts you around $109,000 and change. So back to the rear, you do get some trunk space and a little bit down here, Hidden by the tail light is a small little button that opens the trunk. All right, so don't get too excited because there's not a lot of room. They've relocated the battery to the back here. 
probably for weight distribution. There's about 5.4 cubic feet of space. Uh, I don't play golf, but uh, there's not a lot of room to, to put a set of golf sticks in there. You might have to change your hobby or just get some kids clubs in order to accommodate. All right, so under the hood, the beating heart of this car is Lexus's high performance naturally aspirated, that's important, five liter V8, puts out 471 horsepower, 398 pound feet of torque, and is paired with an extremely quick shifting 10 speed automatic transmission. So naturally aspirated V8 engines are pretty much a dying breed. There are a few left, but in 2022, it's only a handful of cars that are available with a naturally aspirated V8 engine. Obviously, they include this car. Now, Lexus has the most because they have the uh, IS500 F performance. They also have the RCF. And then from GM and Corvette, you get the Corvette. You also get uh, the Camaro as well. From Dodge, you get the Challenger Charger combo. You also get from Chrysler, the Chrysler 300 can be specced with a naturally aspirated V8. And then there's the Genesis G90. If I've missed any, it's because I can't remember. Uh, so let me know in the comments if I've missed any naturally aspirated V8 cars that are available for sale in 2022. Oh yeah, the Ford Mustang GT. That was the one I forgot. All right, let's do a sound check and then I'll rev it up to see what it sounds like. I already know that it doesn't have a soft limiter and that it is quite loud. That was as good for you as it was for me. Uh, amazing. All right, so since I did accept the BRZ challenge to get into the back, I'm gonna see if I can get in the back of this. So the chair is moving out of the way. That's very lucky that it is. Um, there's a pretty good chance that I won't pull the seat back because I don't think I'm gonna be able to get out, but it's, yeah, it's pretty grim. How about I lean forward a little bit? Okay, well, if there wasn't a seat there, I think it would be fine. I put my feet out on here, but with the seat back, please don't come back towards me. It is. I have to hop out real quick. Yeah, that's a problem. See what happened? I would be completely legless at this point. Yeah, okay, well. That was a uh, fairly useless consumer test. So now it needs to let me out. I think even kids might have a problem in being in this car. So we'll just get out now. And what we've done is we've made all the seats dirty and achieved absolutely nothing. All right, go back to where you were. So, Let's try the front where there's a lot more room to play around with, kind of. Uh, I do have my bottle in the only real cup holder. There's another one in the middle right there. There's really nowhere to put your phone. I throw my bottle in here, but let's talk about these seats. They're orange and black, pretty much like the rest of the car. Steering wheel is completely orange. It feels really good in your hands. It's a nice place to be, super comfortable, just sort of lacking in storage. And of course it has this infernal trackpad. So when I show you some of the features that I like in here, we're not gonna discuss that one because it's been talked about way too much. And to be honest, it's, it's fine, it works. It's just really tricky to use while you're on the move. So here we are in the cockpit and uh, it's a little old school, but it is beautifully made. I mean, there's not a hard scratchy piece of plastic anywhere you do get this uh, quite small display up here got to use the trackpad to do anything and then uh, you can hit some physical buttons 
uh, down here for the menu. And one of the things that I found was if you go into setup and then you go to vehicle and then you go to whoops, drive mode customization, it's like playing a video game, um, you'll notice that um, when I first got into the car, the powertrain was set to eco, even though I had set it here to Sport Plus. I'm glad I noticed that, so now I got full power on absolutely everything. We shall hit the back button, and that's pretty much all you need to know, because the rest of the stuff, uh, cooled seats, everything else, you need to set those while you're stopped. Do like this beautifully made aluminum uh, volume button with a on-off situation right there. Um, you can use these physical little gnarled sort of buttons as well, rolly scroll wheels. Uh, you can go media, a radio, and you can do tune as well. Here you've got your physical AC, and then there it is. Lexus loves to give you a CD player. Stop starts right there, and then you've got, well, <laughs> it's a nice Prius shifter. That's really all I can say. And then immediately ahead of the shifter is the Lexus bespoke build little plate. All right, so storage space, not a whole lot. There's a little cup holder right here. There's also the center armrest that you can slide back. I have the keys in there. It does serve as another cup holder. And then there's a control right here. Both sides can actually um, access that passenger as well. And you've got uh, two USBs the old 3.5 jack and 12 volt. And the reason I have a cable in there is because there's no wireless charger for my $110,000. Quirks aside though, I absolutely love it. So as I said, the control on here, right now we're in normal mode. If you scroll down, you go to comfort, or rather counterclockwise, you go to comfort, scroll up Sport S, Sport S Plus, hit the button in the middle to go back. So once you're in Sport S, the uh, tachometer is fiery red and, and, and all angry. Now, one of the buttons that I really like is this one right here, because when you press that, the display moves over. It's mechanical, not digital, and shows you some additional information. Uh, a little bit of sun out today. There's a bit of glare on the camera, um, but that's 15.1 miles per gallon. Not bad considering. Uh, and a little bit of information, how hot it is outside, etc. And then you just slide it back. Whoa, and it just automatically goes back to show you what you had on there before, fuel capacity, oil temp, etc. Love it, beautiful little details. The steering wheel, as I said, is really nice. Um, there's your lane departure. I had to smash that into the steering wheel to get it to turn off. I finally did manage to get it to turn off. This car comes with memory seats, a head-up display, and in old school Lexus style, you gotta push a button to get the fuel tank flap to open. So now all we need to do is take it for a drive. So, weirdly, I'm gonna start off in comfort mode. I do like the fact that uh, whenever you um, put it into drive, it uh, takes the parking brake off. It's hidden way down here, and I don't even know why they bother to have it if it's automatic, but they do. So, here we go. So we are in comfort mode, whooshing along under this V8's power. The ride is quite soft. It feels nice. This isn't a very good road. This is the mode that we would use to quietly and serenely go to play croquet with your best friend across the other side of town or to play that game of golf that we mentioned earlier. Just whooshing along in perfect silence. The thing about this car though is it's two cars in one. This is the luxury on the freeway, not a care in the world, probably get decent gas mileage, just driving along in supreme comfort. The other part of the car is that the demon needs to be awoken under the hood. So simply by going into Sport S mode and sticking our foot to the floor,
suddenly we are transformed into a fucking amazing car. Excuse my French. Holy shit. It's not the fastest of this type of car. Porsche 911 is going to beat it every day. The BMW 8 Series is going to beat it. But there's so much soul pouring out of this car. And it's just incredible. And the noise. You know, and then once it realizes you want to play and have some fun, the 10 speed is perfectly mated to this motor, this incredible V8 engine, which revs to 7,000 RPM. And it's obviously rear wheel drive only, so you gotta be a little careful. Traction control kicks in, you see the light flashing on the dash all the time. But stick your foot in it, and this is an absolute joy. Wow. And the other thing is, the ride is actually really composed. It's not harsh, it's not breaking your spine. That S3 I drove the other day um, was quite hard, even in the most comfortable mode. This, they've got it right. Again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but give me some Michelin Pilot Sport 4s and I'm away. So you hear the downshift and again, it just keeps this engine on the boil and makes the most wonderful sounds you've ever heard. This is why I love this car so much. It's, a, it's just everything, the complete package. The build quality is fantastic. It's a Lexus. It's going to last forever. It's rare because nobody buys one. And it's got this thumping 471 horsepower naturally aspirated V8 under the hood. I mean, the shifts are lightning fast. This is a conventional 10-speed automatic too, if you can consider a 10-speed automatic conventional in any way. But they've programmed this thing to perfection. Now, it is a heavy car. Going around these tight twists is not really its favorite thing to do, but it holds onto gears and it behaves itself quite well. The chassis has been tuned really, really well. Now, an RCF with the same engine is probably gonna be quicker than this in tight twisties. These are really sort of like 30, 40 mile an hour bends, but this thing is just ruling them. I think that beeping was the uh, lane departure turning itself back on. That's, that's really annoying. I thought I'd managed to turn it off. It might come back on each time you start the vehicle, so. This is my favorite V8 engine of all time. Faction. And what it reminds me of a little bit is that classic, the old LFA. There's no more LFA. It's very sad. There'll be a new one. It's going to be electric, so it's not going to sound anywhere close. This is the closest thing you're going to get to how an LFA was. And again, that wasn't the fastest car in its particular segment. But it had soul in spades. sounds so good and then you know the more you rev it the faster you go the more it gets into it the more it just wants to make more noise for you it's it's that Japanese V8 sort of screaming whale I don't know I just love it I prefer it to you know say a Charger Challenger you know scat pack uh, exhaust, you know, with the with the 6.4 Hemi. I, I, I don't mind that one, but this is just majestically good. And the steering is really good too. It's it's slightly heavier in Sport Plus mode, 
but you can actually feel what the fronts are doing. Definitely a, uh, <laughs> I love that downshift. Definitely a, uh, a slow in, fast out kind of car in these turns. Brakes are good too. Um, been driving it for a couple of days. Um, they do heat up a little bit, but they haven't faded at any point. So now we've come up behind a slow vehicle, which is, happens every single time. Um, and we've used quite a lot of fuel just by doing that. But I love the sound of burning money, so, especially in a car like this. So while we can't do anything, we'll just pop it back into normal mode. I like the fact that you can just hit the button in the center. And now it's much more restrained. gentleman let me past one of those people that wants you to have fun in your hundred and ten thousand dollar car that you've got for a week oh my god this thing is just so good god I mean just hearing that exhaust and the down changes and the Always has the power in the right place. So well done. Wow. Just wow. Oh my god, it's so good. So Lexus say it'll do zero to 60 in, you know, 4.5 seconds. Uh, it's pretty much the same as say an Audi S3, but it gets off the line real fast. Even though it has rear wheel drive, it has a phenomenal job of hooking up from a standstill. And of course, because there's no turbos to get in the way, there's no lag. Also, what do we think? So just like rhinos and mountain gorillas, the LC500 is an endangered species much like manual transmissions, but the naturally aspirated V8 is probably going to go the way of the Dodo. Will be a sad day indeed when that actually happens. But at least I had the privilege of being able to drive this. I've driven one. I try to drive one of these every year, um, either the coupe or the convertible form. I've never driven the hybrid. I don't want to drive the hybrid because it's just not any fun. So anyway, once again, Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. This is the best Grand Touring car in the world. We'll catch you next time with another video. Out.